Good morning, everyone. We'll do introductions like normal. Uh, we're just waiting till we actually get to eight o'clock. Okay, it's getting real. I'm clicking go on Facebook Live. So everybody get your game face on. If you're in your jammies, just turn that camera off. Feel free. Okay, good morning, everyone. It's right at that time. So I like to start on time, value your time. Uh, just a quick caveat, because I know we have some uh, new faces. This Business Brew, uh, I got asked, actually it was by Sarah, who's on with us this morning. Um, uh, she didn't mean to ask, but she ended up asking, is this the first one? And I said, actually, we've been doing this for, I think, three years or maybe two and a half. I'd have to go back because I've been tracking all the speakers. But Business Brew was an idea I stole from an economic development group uh, south of here called SWEDA, which is the Southeast Washington Economic Development Association. It's a mouthful. And they used to call theirs Cup of Joe. And I loved the format. And really what it was is they just brought in an outside expert uh, sat in a round table environment and then the people who showed up just asked questions in a really informal casual setting So for the last few years, that's how we've done it And we've done it through the co-working space that I work out of and I've seen Tanya works out of a co-working space in Liberty Lake So high five to co-working uh, So I do mine out of fellow and then when COVID hit I made that we actually got March uh, done because we did that was on the first Thursday of March and so for April, we decided to do them all virtually. And until things change significantly, we'll continue to do them virtually. Uh, and normally we would meet at seven and then we would uh, hang out. And I don't like to use the term networking, but we would introduce ourselves to strangers for a half an hour. And then at 8.30 we, or 7.30, we would turn it over and, and gather around and, and do that informal question. Uh, so with the format online, what I like to do is I still like to allow people to introduce themselves. So if you're on the Zoom, I will go through my list and just ask you to give me a quick rundown of who you are and who you're with and what you do. Uh, if you're joining us with Facebook Live, you don't get that choice. Sorry, uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but we have a good group joining us this morning, so it's going to be fun. And then before we fire away, we'll, we'll end with Tanya introducing herself and then we'll jump right in. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, uh, feel free to chat us and uh, comment on the live stream and we'll answer your questions. If you're joining us uh, through Zoom, uh, you're welcome to ask your question live. You can just hit me up in chat or you can just ask your question in the chat. So without any further delay, let's just go through the list. And Beth, you're first in my list. So just tell me who you are, who you're with, and how you're doing this morning. My name is Beth Hodgson, and I'm the principal engineer and president of Spring Environmental here in Spokane. And I'm doing great today. Wonderful. <laughs> the end of the week, but that's a plus. <laughs> Beth, what does Spring Environmental do? Um, we help companies uh, comply with and understand environmental and safety regulations. Awesome. Okay. Next on my list is Upside Down Gretchen. Good morning. Yes, I am upside down this morning for some reason. And um, my name is Gretchen Renz. I am the business manager of Bernardo Wills Architects. We're a commercial architecture firm in his, here in Spokane. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next on my list is Josh's iPhone, and I assume that's not me, so it must be another Josh, unless somebody grabbed my phone, and I don't know. I'm going to unmute you, Josh, so you can talk. You ready? Oh, we're playing that game. I think I unmuted, and then he muted himself. All right, Josh, well, you can chat us because I saw you already did that. So we'll move on. Jalea, you're on. You want to give us a quick introduction and how you're doing this morning? Yeah, so I'm currently in my car. Sorry if there's background noise, <laughs> um, but I'm Jalea Johnson. Um, I am a digital marketing consultant at um, Wonderment Marketing. Wonderful. Thanks. For See, business brew virtual means you get to be in your car and and responsibly safely drive while also listening to this great conversation. And that's it's my favorite part. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Josh, I see you're unmuted. Are you ready to give us a rundown, buddy? Let's see. Let's see. Did a video pop up? Yeah, we see you now too. Awesome. Hello, hello. So I'm kind of new, first time here. Um, Tanya. Um, I, I friended me on Facebook yesterday after another Facebook live and uh, so I thought I would join so I am in Pueblo, Colorado 
I own a uh, portrait uh, photography studio with my wife, um, and I'm also a graphic designer for AT&T. Wow, Josh, I think you win the award for furthest away this morning. Good job. I love it. Awesome. All right, next on my list is Sarah. Good morning, Sarah. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I have to give myself a little bit of a shout out. Sarah reached out to me on LinkedIn and she did a very good job of introducing herself and then connecting with me. And then she did a very good job of uh, pitching a meeting. And then I, I think I threw her a curveball and I said, I'll trade you. If you join Business Brew, I'll join your meeting. And she's here. So thanks for joining us, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm new to Spokane. I just moved here this summer. I moved here all the way from North Carolina. So I have been using LinkedIn as a way to meet people because of the pandemic and all of that. But I'm working out here as an agent for New York Life. So we're a holistic financial planning firm and we deal with insurance, investments, and retirement planning. Awesome. Thanks for joining, Sarah. And by the way, feel free to steal that move, those of you listening. If somebody wants to connect with you on LinkedIn and then they want to set up a meeting, do it. But get them to join one of your meetings. It's, it's a win. All right, Wendy, good morning. How are you? I'll let you. Yeah, you get it. I don't want to do it for you. Hey, how's that? You're perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I'm Wendy Taylor. I'm the digital marketing manager at Deer Park Physical Therapy and Fitness Center. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you, Josh? Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. All right. And I think that's it so far for yeah. who is joining us on uh, the Zoom call. So I will turn it over to Tanya and let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're doing over at WorkStory Photography. Okay, hi, I'm Tanya Smith, and um, I've lived in Spokane now for about 11 years, and before that, I've lived in Seattle and California and just kind of all over the place. Um, my background's in actually graphic design, and I worked in branding and marketing for several years and was getting frustrated with the lack of great photography being provided to me as a designer for my <laughs> my clients, especially the small business clients. Because um, I, I got to work with some national brands. They had great photography available. Um, but then, you know, for the dentists and the chiropractors and all those people, um, you know, they were just sending us really bad photos to use in their brochures and their billboards and their newsletters and their websites. And um, I just kind of decided, hey, I'm going to start offering that to people. I want to start learning how to be a better photographer so that I can provide that to people. And um, my business just kind of went 100% in that direction. So now I, you know, I mostly just do photography for businesses um, and turn over all the other design and that stuff to whoever does that for them. So that's what I do now. And with social media, people are needing photos even more for their business. Um, you know, a way to tell their story visually and be a support to, you know, the other communications in their business. So that's what we do at WorkStory. Awesome. Okay. So I am connected with you both personally and professionally on social media. So I get a little bit of a behind the scenes to Tanya. So I might have some questions that hover around that. I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's uh, good. And then just so you know, the last time Tanya and I saw each other in person was at uh, the annual party that I threw for Tinderbox, my business back in February, Tanya brought her kids. Did you bring all of them or did you just yep. bring, oh yeah, brought yeah, all of them. <laughs> so we did throw a kid friendly event. It was awesome. It was awesome. I appreciated that. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, we were actually, I had, it was funny. Um, one of my clients said she was going to come with her husband and make it a date night. And I was like, great, leave the kids. And then they showed up with their kids. They're like, wow, <laughs> it just, we, it's kid friendly. We couldn't not bring them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So over, I just, over the course of doing this, uh, your business, and you have to think non-client, what I would love is w for you to share with us, what's one of your favorite visual brand stories that you've seen? And it can, I would love it to be not a client because I know if, if you're doing it for your clients, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Favorite. Oh man, this one kind of puts me on the spot. <laughs> hey, that's what we're supposed to do here. I, I even told her before we jumped on live, I was like, I'm not going to ask you anything that's going to yeah. stump you. I guess I did. Um, let's see. 
Well, it's just some of my favorite brands, I guess. I really love like Kate Spade. Um, she has really uh, bright colors. I always, if I'm flipping through a magazine, I can always tell if it's a Kate Spade. Um, and I think that's what makes a powerful brand image, you know, you, without even seeing the logo, if you, you can see a photo, um, you know, Target is another one. If an ad comes on to Target, before you even see the logo at the end, you know it's Target, just by the visual style that they've developed for their brand. That's, I, I do this game when I uh, lead a workshop and I start talking about marketing and the importance of having a brand beyond just your logo. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask everybody, name one color that you think of when it comes to McDonald's that's not the Golden Arches, and they will always say red. And then it hits them that they've been brainwashed, but they know that that's the color that represents McDonald's. You yep. can do the same thing with Nike and it's the mm -hmm. orange boxes, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see an orange shoe box, you know, it's Nike without even seeing the logo. Yeah. So during COVID has anybody, and, and I, we, this isn't going to be an entirely COVID centric uh, conversation, but we can't not talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, but during, since COVID happened, have you seen any brands and these can be brands, uh, your clients that have made a really good visual storytelling pivot as they look to keep engaging their customers during this time? Hmm, let's see. Oh man, well I have certain clients that um, invest in great photography every year. Mm. And um, I was a little afraid that they might not hire me this year, but they all did. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, so uh, Mike Bass and Associates is one. Um, we just did their, this is the third year in a row I did their shoot, and they always do a big billboard and an ad campaign in the magazines, and it looks totally different from any other real estate agent. Um, it's like, they'd always do black and white, and we'd style them kind of, they were like, we want to look like um, all my children meets the Kardashians in our photo. <laughs> so like, it looks really kind of high end. We pose them really well. Um, and so, yeah, we just finished their shoot, uh, for this year. Um, and I think they really stand out just cause it's different from the four heads on a billboard that most real estate agents do. <laughs> I actually, every time I do a marketing workshop and there's a, a real estate agent in the room, I will pick on them. I'll go, that doesn't motivate me as a customer to call any of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not action oriented, but they do right. it because there's a cost savings, right? Like I can split yeah. a billboard four ways. But right. it's like, which one am I going to pick? And then when they actually have to think through and answer that, they, they land on the answers they don't like. Like if you, if you had to pick somebody to, off a billboard, I mean, you have to think, like, what, what rules are you going to follow? Um, right. So I think that's great. Um, yeah, did any so clients... Actually oh. had, um, sorry. Um, no, go ahead. Yeah, they've actually had people see their picture, like, in the Spokane magazine and call them because of their picture. Like, you know, they'll be like, how did you find me? And they're like, well, I saw your picture in the, in the magazine and I thought you looked nice. Nice. So, well, that's like, it's like proof <laughs> that, you know, a great picture can work for you. Yeah, so Josh just chatted us and said he felt like State Farm did a really good job because they were showing commercials with employees at home serving customers. Nice. Um, yeah, so I think that's a good example. And yeah. I felt like there were some brands that too early jumped on the, like, let's get back to business as usual or life as usual. And I felt like that was kind of tacky. Um, I think Applebee's falls into that group. They were like, welcome back. And I was like, I'm not going back. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah. I get why they feel compelled to do that. Um, but it's nice to hear that you still had some clients call you for those same packages that they've been doing year after year. So yeah, none of them really thought about like, Hey, should we do something different? Did any of them do anything with masks or anything with a work at home environment? I had a couple where, um, we did a few, I had a, um, a car sales person. Um, and we did a few in a mask so that she could show people, you know, when you come in, mm -hmm. you know, but we didn't want to do, I mean, most of these people invest in these photos to use for right. a year at least, you know, so we're like, we don't want to do everything in a mask because you want to be able to use these, you know, long-term. Um, so we, I haven't had any do, I mean, a lot of my clients are like life coaches, so we will show them on a zoom call or yeah. you know, their consultants. So we, yeah, we have done incorporated a lot of that, like showing them doing virtual meetings and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but I haven't had any specifically addressing really like how they're handling COVID, I guess. We've just kind of 
just kind of been business as, as usual for a lot of these clients, I guess, just because, you know, they're pivoting how they need to, but it doesn't really change how they do business too much. So, so. that begs a, a question here. If I come to you to do some headshots, whether it's one of your uh, smaller sessions, and I'll let you tell us what those are actually called, or I'm paying you for an individual session, how long should I, what, how long am I allowed to use my headshot? Oh, uh, so I give my clients a royalty free usage license so they can use it forever. I, so, I'm not charging you a fee to renew it every year or anything like that. Um, but I mean, I, I tell people, you know, if your look changes, you should get a new one. <laughs> you know, like if you lost weight, gained weight, changed your hair color, got significantly older. <laughs> well, I mean, that's like aging is gradual, right? Yeah. Like I just, all of a sudden I wake up and I'm 39. I'm not, you know, 30. Yeah. Um, right. So, I mean, is it like, is five years like a safe marker? Or is that too long? I mean, five years from now, I'm going to be, I'm going to be pretty old. Yeah. I think just look, you know, how do you still look the same? If you don't, you know, it might be time to update. Um, like, I'll use my mom for an example. Um, she has been dyeing her hair for like 20 years. Like, and all of a sudden, like a year ago, she's like, I'm not dyeing my hair anymore. And she let it go totally white. But on her business card, she still has brown hair. <laughs> and so like people are like, this, oh, you look totally different. You know, like if you look totally different and people aren't going to recognize you, it's a good idea to get a new headshot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, Beth just jumped in. She said, GSI did a spread on before and after our firm was included with a form, uh, photo of performing training unmasked and a photo delivering food to a bank wearing masks. Nice. So yeah, there's, a, there's a, an example of, you know, kind of that before and after. And you're right. So I, I, that begged another question, which is, um, if I'm going to invest in some professional photography for my business, there is a certain amount of evergreen I want with that so that yeah. I can continue to use them. Um, when I, when I do get those, is it the same rules? Is it like, unless significant changes happen in my business, should I plan on using those until something changes or how often, I mean, I know you're the professional and you might be a little biased, but like how often should, should I be looking to renew those? Yeah. So I think just looking at your marketing, you know, like what, what are you wanting to communicate? If, do you want to show, you know, constantly, um, what's going on, what's new happening, then get them updated regularly. Um, but I've had some clients, like I just did a new shoot for one client. The last time we did one for her was four years ago and she managed to use those same images in her Facebook ads and on her website without needing new ones. Um, because we did a really good job that first time. Like we brainstorm, you know, what are all the situations you're going to need a photo for? Right. And we created, you know, a really good package for her. So she didn't need to update them. Um, and her look didn't really change. So that, that so. somebody talked about that. I was reading through the review. Somebody talked about your intake process. So I assume that's part of it, right? Like as you're setting up, a, like, so I think of Wendy who, who works for a physical therapist, but they have so much more going on there. They have a fitness center, they have a pool, they do physical therapy, they have a full gym. So um, if, if you were walking through an intake, walk me through just that average intake so that you can cover all that ground. Sure, yeah. So usually we'd start with, I send a little questionnaire and it's kind of similar to a questionnaire I would send to someone if I was going to design them a logo. So you're gotcha. probably familiar with, you know, I'm going to ask them questions about their target market and, mm -hmm. um, you know, what's their messaging that, you know, how do they want to be portrayed? Like, tell me some words, you know, do you want to be known as fun and easygoing or do you want to be super professional? You know, just so I have those words in my mind as we're thinking about developing a shot list and, and how do I want you to be portrayed in your pictures? So I'll ask a bunch of questions like that. And then I, I'll usually come to your location. If we're going to shoot on location, we'll go through those questions. I'll have you show me around. Usually just in the course of that conversation, my brain is coming up with <laughs> all kinds of ideas. You know, mm -hmm. some clients have a really good idea of exactly what they want, but most of them don't. They're like, we know we need good pictures, but we don't necessarily know exactly what those should be. So I'm asking them, you know, like, where are you going to use these? Are they going to go on your website? specifically, you know, do they need to be horizontal or vertical? <laughs> you know, if you're going to use it for a billboard, we need to consider that because that's going to be really huge and any detail is going to be blown up um, versus tiny in a Facebook ad where we want to have more of like a, you know, a 
a bigger subject um, that's going to show. So I'm, because I've been involved in design and marketing and branding, I, I'm thinking of all those things as we're coming up with a shot list. So then I'll go home and I kind of try to organize the thoughts, you know, come up with a list, make kind of an itinerary so that we are really organized on the day of the shoot and can get it done as quickly as possible. Um, and I usually try to do that. Like if, if we were at a physical therapist's office, I'd organize it by room mm. where we were going to shoot. If, if it's more of like a life coach, I'd organize it by like outfit they're going to wear <laughs> or something, you know, like what makes the most sense to organize this shot list. Um, and then if we need models or whatever, you know, we have an itinerary so they know exactly what time to show up and exactly what time we're going to create those images. And then we try to follow that as closely as possible, but sometimes things go differently and, and we're flexible, but at least we have a plan. So I'm not just showing up being like, okay, what pictures do you want me to take? <laughs> so it's more of a production than just a photographer showing up to capture the moments like it would be for a wedding or something like that. So, so uh, how, I mean, you, you mentioned so many good things in there and it's going to be hard to unpack all of that. So, you know, <laughs> the good news is this will be available on YouTube and we'll, people can go back and watch it. But so social media is this weird animal and, and you and I both play in that space. I was looking at your mm -hmm. website, you offer that service. That's something that just comes included with the things that I do. Mm -hmm. um, and we both know how fast you could burn through images. Yeah. So if, if I'm posting five days a week and I want to image with every one, I mean, 25 pictures is going to go by fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So help me understand your process for that. Just knowing that I can consume your service so much faster if I'm putting it on social media versus if I'm putting it on my website, right? Like right. 15 images on my website is going to get me a lot of, a lot of runway, but 15 minutes images for social media, I'm going to run out of those really quick. And then all of a sudden people are going, I've seen this picture before. Yeah. 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 So there's a couple things we do. One is um, just try to plan for as many kind of like messages as we possibly could and shoot in one day. Um, the other option would be to do like a quarterly, or monthly retainer with me where, you know, once a quarter I come and we do new photos. So, uh, and you know, we just try to play, plan for, you know, what subjects are you gonna have coming up in the next quarter um, that we want to create photos for. So um, that's a way to do it. So you're not having to like come up with new photos every day as you're doing your social media, you know? It's just a way to get it done quickly in one chunk um, and not have to have a staff photographer too. Cause you know, bigger businesses, that's what they'll do. They'll just have a photographer on staff. That's always taking pictures of what's going on for social media. But mm -hmm. I feel like if we're planning out, you know, your core messaging and creating images that are relevant to your brand, and then you just have a library of these photos, you can use them over again, over again, you know, after a certain amount, of time or so, you know, I think it's okay to reuse your photos sometimes. So, so yeah, <laughs> but you see those, those businesses that are using like that same image over yeah, and over yeah. because it's so good. Um, okay. So again, so much to talk about and I, I just, I don't think we're gonna be able to touch on all of it, but you're, you're killing it. So I, I, I so when, when I think about, um, my clients, I think a lot about like, I've thought about picking up a camera and learning that skill because the same thing, it's like, how do I help them create enough of their own images that they're not either using stock or they're not, you know, recycling yeah. the same images. I, I would, I would wager a bet that uh, Jalea, I know I'm saying it wrong and we've met and I'm so, I feel, I think she said Jalea and I'm saying Jalea. So I apologize, but I know she's in the same boat as a marketing professional too. And she might pick up a camera, but I just go like, we, that's not a skill set I'm ready to learn. Mm -hmm. So I love to hear that you're doing this retainer or even mm -hmm. setting up quarterly shoots because yeah. that can make it so much easier to access good imagery all throughout the year. Yeah. And then you don't have to learn how to take pictures, you know, I mean, or even hire someone, just like outsource it to someone who takes care of it. Um, and yeah, that's my main service. I mean, I have, I have like three clients I manage social media for right now. And it's not something I'm planning on really expanding. I'd rather just do the photos for, for you guys, because, um, it's a lot, you know, mm -hmm. to manage someone else's social media. Um, you have to kind of become part of their 
team because you have to know so much about what's going on and that kind of stuff. So I actually feel like it's beneficial to companies to have someone in house manage it, but have some help with these components, you know, like right. help, help them get set up, come up with a system, have a library of photos and know, you know, the types of things they should be posting. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's, it's hard to kind of integrate yourself into another business. And if you're not there every day, right. you know, so anyway, and then become a subject matter <laughs> expert on something that you may not know anything about. Uh, yeah. So you've touched on it. We have to talk about it. Say I hire you and I get a bunch of images, but that's not going to get me through the whole year. Mm -hmm. What are your best tips? And we asked Matt Slotemaker a couple months ago and he's a videographer and he came on and he was so gracious to share with us some of his tips and tricks. Oh, sure. So all I have is a, is a cell phone. Right. I don't, I'm not going to spend, you know, two grand yeah. on a Canon or whatever. Right. So walk me through your tips. Like how do I get the best pictures when I'm taking it with my cell phone and my only goal, like we're not talking website or billboard, but yeah. I'm going to use them on social. Like walk me through some of those tips and tricks that you've learned. Yeah, no, I actually recommend for your social media, you know, you got to produce some of your own content. So um, the number one thing you can do is look for or create more light. <laughs> Uh, you know, if it's dark and dingy in your office, um, bring in a ring light or something like that, or just, uh, you know, get closer to the window, go outside, that kind of thing. Um, and a good thing to look for is diffused light. So, uh, you know, the harsh direct sun can not be great. So if you're in the shade or if there's bright light coming into your window, you can just have some sheer curtains there or wait until the light has shifted to a different direction that kind of thing. Um, and then let's see, I have lots of posing tips, but they're kind of hard to teach <laughs> no, in this, like <laughs> format, I guess. But I've thought of, I've actually thought about making like a lead magnet. That's like a video showing you how to pose. So you look more flattering. So stay tuned. <laughs> Maybe I'll have that yeah. on my website soon. <laughs> uh, posing is funny. My, my uh, oldest just turned 18. So he did senior pictures this summer and he, he would like watching him in real time being coached on like how to do one of these. And he's like, this feels so terrible, but then it comes out looking so right. natural. Right. And so I, there is something to be said for that. And I know Wendy when and they were a client of mine, we ran into some of those issues where they took an image that they thought was going to work. And then once it posted, you're like, Oh, that actually looks awkward or whatever. Yeah. Like it did, it, right. you know, so I, if, if offline, if you have some tips that you could, you could let me know, I'll add them cause I'll blog about this. Or if you have a blog that you've written about, that would be great because I do, yeah, I agree. Great. Posing is such a weird, weird thing and it's not natural and how to coach on that. But your lighting tip is so great. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've spent so much time learning about, you know, body language and like facial expressions and um, just and how to coach people to get <laughs> to where it looks good. It's kind of hard to pass that knowledge on in like one, you know, in five minutes. But yeah, uh, totally. a couple things I could tell you though is what's closer to the camera is gonna look bigger, right? So that's something to, something to keep in mind. So if you want your backside to look smaller, <laughs> you know, put it farther away from the camera. Um, and we, you know, we want to see the face more prominent. So I always have my clients like lean forward a little bit toward me. So the face, you know, is the focal point um, and turning a little bit to the side can help look more interesting. You know, we don't want to look like a mug shot, just standing straight on. Um, so, you know, turning to the side a little bit can help. So those are just kind of some, some common little tricks you can do. So. <laughs> so, no, that's perfect. Um, I, your backside comment has me <laughs> rolling. Uh, Josh jumped in and said, we try to consult clients on their marketing as well. So, you know, why they may not need to post every day or why they might need to, um, or why they might need to post every day and what other means of marketing they can use. So Facebook stories versus a right. post and all that. And that's really yeah. good. You know, adding video into the mix or, you know, adding some kind of a graphic that maybe doesn't right. rely on an image. Those are all good tips. Okay. So, uh, I'm coming to you as a client and we're going through your intake and, and I don't mean like businesses you won't work with. So, uh, so don't go down that path, but what are your hard no's? Like what do people ask you to do? Uh, not like, you know, embarrassing or awkward or inappropriate, but like, what are those rules that you're like, these are my rules and I don't break them. Hmm. I haven't had many. I mean, most of the time my clients, you know, 
if they have an idea, I try to roll with it and, you know, try it out. But um, one thing I've learned is if we skip that planning process, that intake process, it doesn't turn out as well usually. Um, you know, I had one business where they wanted to do a shoot and they they called like two days before our shoot in two days or whatever, like on this day. And it, but we didn't get that planning part in. Like I didn't get a chance to go there and scope out the scene and, um, and help them choose their models and that kind of thing. Um, we had a shot list that we'd made from our, based on our meeting, but um, it, the models that they chose just did not work well. They, they weren't prepared. <laughs> they like didn't have their hair washed and their clothes were not great. Um, and then the, come to find out a few places where they wanted to shoot were under construction at the time when <laughs> they knew. So it just like, it didn't turn out very well and they weren't very happy with the end result. And I feel like because we skipped that part where I'm super involved in helping them plan, that was one of the main reasons. And so now I'm just kind of like, if you're hiring me for the full experience, we got to do the whole thing. We, we can't skip it. So I do have some packages where, you know, they just want me to come in for an hour and take pictures and that doesn't include the planning part. And so I just make sure they know, like, this is different. <laughs> I'm just coming to take pictures, you know, like it's going to be an hour and whatever we end up with is what we end up with. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different. So that one's actually attractive to me as somebody who does a lot of in-person live workshops. So mm -hmm. when we're back to that world, because that's the biggest thing that I can take a picture of, like you've worked with consultants. Consulting is two people sitting around a computer and a pad yeah. of paper. And right, it's right. not always like that's the sexiest great. thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, to picture, but like me at a workshop, yeah. I would be totally fine with you coming for an hour right. and just so getting what you get. So yeah, that's why I developed that one. Cause there are certain situations where right. you, know, you need to plan a shot list for that. You're giving a presentation. Right. So. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. those situational awareness, like what are you looking to accomplish? And I love, you said, don't skip the plan. I think that's super important. And I think the PS to that is don't skip the plan and then don't change the plan. Like if yeah. that's your plan, yeah. stick to it. And if you do plan on rescheduling. Right. Um, so so tell a, a couple, like any other tips to like, I, we've talked about your, your, your things to try to look for. Just what are some other things to avoid? You said, you know, what's closer to the camera will look bigger. Um, you know, get, get good lighting, anything else that falls in that realm of just, you know, especially if I'm doing this with my phone, any other things to avoid? Yeah, let's see. Um, it'd be nice. Like if you're taking pictures of just yourself, like get a little tripod and a trigger thing. So you're not always, you know, with your hand out, taking the selfie kind of thing. You can kind of... <laughs> you know, level up your selfie a little bit uh, by putting that phone on a little tripod and, or just asking someone else to take your picture. You know, if you work with colleagues, um, take turns taking the pictures <laughs> so you can get in it. <laughs> when I do LinkedIn workshops, I always, I promote headshots and I've actually thrown your name out at a couple of them where I say, oh, you know, hey. Tanya's in town if you need, but I always say you can't like a car selfie, bathroom selfies, those yeah. don't play on LinkedIn. Like, I don't yeah. care what you think. That's not going to work. Like, that's not okay. the place for that. Yeah. Um, okay. So since we've done it, let's talk about headshots. Tell okay. me you, and I know this is going to be like the easiest question I ask you, but why does a good headshot matter if I'm a business professional? Well, I, I think it just says you cared enough to go get a professional photo. <laughs> you know, like you're successful enough that you could go pay someone to take your picture um, <laughs> and you know, I have some headshot events every once in a while. It's super affordable. It takes 15 minutes. You come in you get your headshot. Um, and you know, and I'll ask you, you know, what do you do? How do you want to be portrayed in this picture? And so, you know, you can do a lot for, um, giving a first impression with that photo online, especially since that's the first place a lot of people are going to see you, um, in our digital world, you know, so it's really, I think it's really important to have a professional photo if, if you want to be seen as a professional. You know? Yeah, I agree. So Jalea said that Apple watches have built in iPhone camera triggers. So oh, that's, that's, cool. that's pretty rad. Um, maybe the only reason for me to get one. I, I'm not a big, I'm not, a big, that's a whole other conversation yeah. of why I'm not a big fan. I just, I'm not like, oh, hey, in a meeting, I'm going to look at my, like, I can't get out of here fast enough. All right. So your website talks about corporate brand and personal brand. Mm -hmm. And I, and your personal brand part of your website really kind of talked about how that's a, that's still a, a business situation, mm -hmm. 
but it's different from a corporate brand. So can you just walk me through the differences of those two and tell us why we would look at doing either of those? Yeah, so I just wanted to separate them out a little bit because the personal brands are more kind of like, those are the business coaches and the life coaches and the consultants where it's, it's one person. We're kind of mm -hmm. focusing on, you know, they might bring in some models to show some stuff, but for the most part, it's, you know, their name on the business, their face. And then the corporate ones are more of like the teams, you know, that's, I've got like engineering clients, um, dentists, that kind of thing. Um, so that's just kind of the way that I <laughs> kind of invented to separate those out. It, we basically go through the same process mm -hmm. for the photo shoot. Um, it's just a little bit different in what we're usually showing and creating for you um, based on your business type, I guess. Right. So, so I, I think that you are uh, competitively priced. I think that's the best way I can say that. Um, I've worked with lots of clients that have had lots of quotes from different photographers and mm -hmm. over the years, um, and they range, you know, from, you know, okay, I can handle that to holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I know why as a marketing professional and I understand the reasons, but help those who aren't as initiated to that process. Why is photography expensive? Why is it so expensive? Um, shouldn't it be really easy to just come in and take pictures? Like, tell me about yeah. that process for you. Yeah. Okay. So for me, well, I mean, I do include all of that pre-production planning. Um, you know, I'm using my years of expertise to help you have a successful outcome. Um, and then in traditional commercial photography, normally there would be a fee to like come take the pictures and then you would have to license each individual photo um, for the usage. So let's say you're going to put it on a billboard, you're going to use it on packaging, you're going to use it on ads. So traditional commercial photographers would charge you for each of those things. And there would be like a time limit, like after a year, you would have to pay another licensing fee. So that can get really expensive. And it's based on the, um, the value of that photo, like mm -hmm. how much money is it going to help you make? So, and in my background with graphic design, I knew for small businesses, I just wanted to give you a royalty free license, use it however you want. Um, so, and some photographers would say I'm leaving money on the table, but I'm like, I want to give you what you want and what you need as a small right. business. Um, and so, you know, I see that as it's a valuable asset for you, your photography, you are using it to make money. So I'm not just going to charge you an hourly rate to come in and do it because there's got, you know, more value for you. And, and, you know, my clients definitely get a return on their investment. They're using their pictures everywhere. It's bringing them business. So that's, you know, you might see me just come in for a couple of hours, but there's a lot more time going into it and um, thought and it's helping you make money. So, well, that's that back end piece, right? Like how much yeah. time it takes to sort through oh, yeah. and edit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the planning part too. Yeah. The whole thing, like the photo shoot is just the middle part that you see, but there's, so much more going into it. Um, and then, you know, I have several employees that I pay um, and uh, tons of overhead, you know, there's a, it's a business, right? <laughs> there's expenses. Um, and the photographers I see that aren't charging very much, they just don't last. They, they're going out of business, you know? And so um, of course I want to be as affordable as I can for my clients. And I, I really try to do that, but I, I want to stay in business too. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> no, that makes sense. And Josh said, um, he made a really good point. He says, the client is not paying for those 15 minutes with you. They are paying for the years that lead up to that moment. They might, so they're paying for your expertise. And then they're also paying for the time after that. And like you said, it's an investment. Uh, but that brings up, here's another uh, question I get a lot, especially when it comes to anything graphic design or web development or video. Um, and, and the state, it's a statement. It's not always a question, but it's, um, hey, I need you to do this thing for me. That should be an easy fix, right? Like, and we know that's not the reality, right? So talk right. me through, like editing a picture to make it look right, is it, is it, there's time invested in that. Oh yeah, yeah, it just depends. I mean, I can, if I'm just doing color correction and that kind of thing, it can be pretty quick. But if, you know, I, I include retouching in most of my packages as well. And that could be anything from removing hairs, like slimming body parts, if anybody wants it, um, taking stuff out of the background that's distracting. I've even like taken out employees because they quit the day after the photo shoot, um, which can take hours, you know, like, but it was still easier than setting up a whole new photo shoot. So we decided to go for it. 
Um, you know, uh, just the, that, and I think that that retouching piece is what makes the photos more polished than what you would just post on your social media. So for, for your website banners, for a billboard, something like that, we do want to touch it up uh, and just make it look, uh, just make sure we're really focused in on what's the focal point and the message of this. So there's no distractions um, in the photo. Is there a point as a professional where you lose authenticity in how much you're touching up or manipulating an image? And do you have some guidelines around that uh, in terms of, okay, so that's no longer me, that's somebody else that just happens to look like me, uh, you know, where you're making shades of people as opposed to, you know, keeping something intact? Like, what are the, what are the rules or guidelines around that? Yeah, so, I mean, in advertising, in advertising there are no rules, but <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep people looking authentic. Like, I, you know, I don't feel like, if you're 60, you shouldn't look 20 in your pictures. I mean, you know, so... I really try to focus on making sure you look like you, but we're just, like I said, removing or lightening anything that's distracting from the message or from the authentic you, you know? Because when we look at people in motion, we aren't fixated on certain things about them, right? Like we're just having a conversation, but in a frozen moment in time, like if there's a huge bulge in your shirt or, you know, like, uh, a wonky hair or something. You know, yeah. wouldn't notice that. So I just take those things out. But I'm not really interested in making you look like a totally different person, you know, unless so what, that's what you want. But. Right. <laughs> What's the weirdest request you've had in regards to that? Like oh. uh, somebody asking you, to, and you don't have to, dev you know, give out names, but yeah, yeah. You know, weirdest, weirdest request in terms of like, take this out or make me look like this. Yeah, I haven't had a lot, but I'm always surprised what people notice about themselves. Because usually I didn't even notice some of the things, you know, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, I have this weird vein on my face. Can you take this out? And I'm like, I didn't even notice that. Like, and I'm usually pretty detail oriented, but people don't, people like have things about themselves that they don't like that legitimately no one else is going to notice. So that that's the kind of thing that always makes me you go kind of go home <laughs> you know like oh I didn't even notice that I did have one client once that asked me to add her wrinkles back in like I I usually like most people you know want me to lighten their wrinkles around their eyes or whatever and she was like oh I think you you know could you add my wrinkles back in I was like sure I wish more people were you know more confident with how they look now uh you know she was like she just didn't think she looked like her and so I, in fact, I, she is a life coach and I interviewed her about that, about how to love the way you look now, because so as the women, especially that I photograph a lot, um, will see their pictures and they're just like, is that what I really look like? And they just hate the way they look. And I'm just like, I think you look amazing, you know, so we can be really hard on ourselves. Uh, and so it can take a little bit of mind work before you get your picture taken, or if you're not used to being photographed, um, to just you know, be like, this is how I look and it's great. And, but that's really hard for us to do sometimes, um, especially if we're not used to being photographed or we don't love the idea of being kind of the face of our brand. It can take a little bit of mindset work. <laughs> okay. So talk to me about that. I, I, I got two things. That, now I want to remind everybody, if you're watching on Facebook live or you're joining us through zoom, you can use chat, you can use Facebook comments to ask questions and keep the conversation going. The, the Zoom chat has been super active this morning, so I'm very, very grateful for that. But if, if I'm not used to that, if, if I haven't had my picture professionally taken a lot, uh, and, I'm, and I might be embarrassed or shy or whatever, uh, what are some of the things that I can do to get myself ready for that? And, and walk me through that process when you sure. work with somebody who may not be as ready for that process as you would like them to be. Yeah, so I, well, I feel like I've kind of become a, a psychologist or a, <laughs> or a coach like working with these, you know, people who feel insecure because no one wants to have their picture taken. I mean, if we're, you know, unless you're a model or something, I, that's what I find, you know, most everyone coming into this situation is like, I'm investing all this money and I don't want to have my picture taken, but I know I need to for my business. So I kind of, you know, assure people like, Hey, I'm, you know, we're going to light this well. I'm going to pose you so you're flattering. We can do some Photoshop <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Just try to kind of ease their minds a little bit. And then, but I would recommend actually, like if you have a coach or, you know, you've thought about working with 
a life coach or you have a business coach or whatever, just bring that up in your meeting before your photo shoot and kind of work through it. You know, there's all of these um, mindset exercises you can do. Maybe write out all your fears. Like, why do you not want to have your picture taken? What do you not like about yourself? And then work on some of those thoughts to yeah. try to turn them around. Um, and another thing you can do is start getting in front of the camera more, like start taking selfies more and look at yourself and name some things you like about how you look now and, um, you know, how successful you are and, and what you love about your life so that you can um, be excited. And also I tell my clients, like these photos are to help you grow your business. They're to help you offer your service to more people. So keep that in mind, you know, make it less about you and more about how you can serve more people and just know that these photos are for that purpose. And also, like I said, no one notices the weird things that you notice about yourself <laughs> for the most part, you know, like I try to capture your personality and that kind of thing. And most, most of the time people love it. They love what they see. They want to see, like, especially on social media, the photos mm -hmm. that get the most engagement are pictures of you. Like yeah. people just want to see pictures of other people. Uh, and so keep just keeping that in mind that this is to help you grow your business and it, you know, kind of take your ego out of it if you can. So I have a client they're on it's Gretchen and Emily and they're with Bernardo Wills. And we have found over the last year or so that some of the most popular things that they post are when you can see the team. Yeah. Um, they do some videos throughout the year and the videos where they're focusing on the team or focusing on, you know, it's fun. Those mm -hmm. ones always do really well. Mm -hmm. uh, every week they, they have, you know, about 40 people in their, in their building. So they do a meet the team. Uh, and those pictures are always really, really um, popular. Uh, yeah. So you're, you're hundred percent spot on. And it's so weird for me in my own business because the number one thing that I post year in year out is a picture of me doing a presentation. And it mm -hmm. seems even for me, so oddly self-serving to post a picture of myself in front of a group of people. But that's what people want to see is they yeah. want to see you out in the wild doing what you do. Right. Uh, they like, for me, they like the pictures when I, cause I, I'll just hand my phone to somebody in the crowd and go, Hey, can you just take some pictures of me? Yeah. And they, they're more than happy to do it. Right. And it's just that picture of you in the wild, that behind the scenes, mm -hmm. uh, anytime you can show people how the sausage is made, they love yeah. it. Yeah, that's the kind of the whole philosophy around <laughs> around work story really is um, telling the story of your business with the photos, <laughs> you know, so. so that's been that, you know, that's the conversation that we've been having. But that was also the subject of what we're talking about today is, you know, that storytelling through brand images. So give me a little bit more of that philosophy. Like, what are what do you mean when you say that? And, and what is if I'm if I'm new to this conversation, what is brand and what is brand photography and what is what are all those things mean what are we looking to accomplish sure yeah so well for example i recently went to a website for a marketing company and they had please tell me it wasn't mine it wasn't yours <laughs> okay. it wasn't yours um but they had zero pictures on their website like they had lots of good copy they you know ran down through their why their services are valuable why they need you and i was like who is giving me these services like i had all these like red flags going off. Like, is this like a robot in China? Because I'm not, there was no, like, like who's the team? Like no headshots, no, um, you know, pictures of them working or anything like that. And I like the trust factor for me in an online space, if there's no pictures of humans or no, especially for a service based business, I want to see who's offering me this business because as humans, we want to make a judgment mm -hmm. <laughs> about, and we base that on seeing someone, right? So I actually just finished reading the book, um, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. And it was fascinating if you haven't read it. Um, but he actually talked about how we make like a computer actually was more accurate in making a judgment than a human was based on what we see. But we as humans feel like we're better at making a judgment when we see someone and meet someone face to face. So <laughs> like that's kind of beside the, the point, it's a little opposite of what my philosophy is, but from a human standpoint, our feelings of trust, we, we want to see a human and we want to make a judgment about them. And we will based in like a, fl a split second when we see a picture. So the opposite could be true. If you've got pictures on your website 
that are not great, <laughs> they could do the opposite, you know? I've had the experience too where I've gone to a website and seen a picture of the provider and thought, wow, they kind of look like a serial killer. I don't want to go to that dentist, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so having someone that can help you give, like project a good image through your online communications, that's my whole uh, goal. Um, and so that's, you know, you want a photo that matches the story you're telling so that there's congruency there and so that we feel comfortable um giving our business to that that business i can't i can't stress that point you made enough that you want to see like who's the team and who is giving me these services and it's funny that you say that because i often in my business i run into people who've worked with other marketing firms or have interviewed other firms or whatever and when I, I just had a professional curiosity, I, I like to look up and know who I'm up against. And yeah. I, I did the same thing. I came across one and there were zero pictures. And I was like, who's doing this? Like, who is behind the scenes here? Who's, and, I, I, and I didn't think a bot, but that was a very legitimate thought that you had is like, what am I actually paying for? And for me, it, it, it was like, I think what I'm paying for is I'm paying for somebody else's internal marketing team for a different business. And they're just like subletting it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, it, the, the point being, neither of us had an authentic reason for why they would be doing that. Right. Um, the other thing that you just said, and this goes back, so it was, you know, um, prepping for that picture day, getting yourself in the right mindset. But then I've always told people, don't pick the picture of yourself because you don't know what you look like. And like you were, you've been saying, you'll notice the things that people don't notice. Do you give that same advice? Are you like, hey, if you're picking a headshot, don't pick it or at least get some other input. Like what are your rules around that? So it just depends on the client. Um, if some, some of them I'll sit down with them and you know, they're just like, no, no, no. Like we'll go through and pick if others. They're, they're like, I don't, I want you to pick for me. So I kind of like go with whatever, you know, if they feel confident in choosing, I let them do it. Other times I'll sit down with them and help them. Other times they'll be like, I want my wife to help me choose. <laughs> you know, So right. I just kind of go with whatever I, I like to, you know, just be of service to my clients in the way that, that best fits them. So I learned that lesson because I've had headshots done a couple times. And the first time years ago, my wife actually joined me and she's still in the pictures on the website. And, um, cause she's a very in integral part of what we do here, but okay. uh, and behind the scenes, um, she's the back office, I like to say, and, and the boss at the same time. <laughs> um, but I was trying to pick the pictures for myself. And she was like, you can't pick that one. I said, why? She goes, that, that's not what you look like. <laughs> I was like, well, I think that's what I look like. She's like, no, that's not what you look like. It's a good picture, but it's not what you look yeah. like. So right. I just defer now. I'm like, you pick the best one. I don't, I clearly don't know mm -hmm. what I'm doing here. Okay. So if, if for whatever, we talked a lot about the digital space and I do want to get your inputs on, on the, uh, so outside of like doing a billboard, if I'm getting marketing materials done or even, you know, something in my personal, where are you going to get stuff printed these days? Like what's your go-to resource for printing? Are you printing locally? Are you printing online? Like what are your, what are your thoughts there? Uh, so locally I've used Mojo um, quite a bit. They're really great. Um, if I'm doing online, uh, let's see for, I actually don't do a lot of this anymore just cause I'm mostly handing it off to people, but gotcha. uh, I've used, um, overnight prints or got print. Yeah. Uh, I found got prints quality has kind of gone down. Really? So, yeah. Like lately I've had a few, cause I have a few clients I've been doing stuff for for years. So I still just do their brochures and stuff. And the last couple of times, like their print, their stock quality has been bad or mm. like had like splotches all over stuff and they weren't willing to like reprint it which is weird because in the past they've been pretty good. So I don't know if they oh. have new customer service or quality control, but anyway, I've used them for years um, and overnight prints. Those are two that are pretty good. Yeah. My last round of business cards I actually got done through got print and I still to this day get compliments on them. Oh, um, so that's a bummer. To, right? Maybe I it was mean, a fluke. <laughs> they, well, no, to say that that could have been over a year ago that I had yeah, this yeah. printed. So, I mean, I don't print business cards all that often. So, um, you know, I just like to pick that. I know another one is Moo. A lot of people like Moo. Oh, yeah, it it tends to be pricier, but yeah. it's, they're good quality. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's come up. Beth, I, I got to go back in time because Beth made a really good point. And this was back when you were kind of talking about managing a business and all that. She said, business 101, most small businesses fail due to poor fiscal management. Mm -hmm. I too have a small business focused on small businesses. 
And we have to price for longevity, reputation, as well as the intended client's resources. And I found myself in that same exact mm -hmm. boat. So I would be a terrible, terrible interviewer, if you can even call me that, if I didn't start asking you more about you and work story and not your service or deliverables, but just running a business. So talk to me over the years of doing this, what are some of the things that you've learned, like your top things that you've learned about running a business and managing a business? Let's see. Okay. Well, that was one, you know, I have to charge enough. Right. <laughs> it's a long time to learn that. Um, and, you know, and I found too that people um, are willing to pay it, you know, because I, I offer a good service and a good product. And um, I've kind of spent a lot of time building up that reputation, you know, and that can take time um, through just, you know, offering the service and, and networking and getting referrals and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I found running a business as a mom to be challenging. You know, I have three kids, they're 12, nine and seven. Um, and just learned to, like, I used to make an excuse like, Oh, I can't do that because of my kids. Uh, but I've learned to just, you know, if I really want to have a business, I just got to figure out how to do that with kids. So, you know, either got in childcare or, um, worked around their schedules, that kind of thing and just stopped making excuses. Uh, I guess, you know, just taking, per, taking responsibility. I'm, I'm responsible for my business. I'm responsible for finding clients. I'm responsible for, you know, making sure I'm charging enough and spending my money wisely. Um, and that kind of stuff, uh, because I, I don't have a boss. It's, it's just me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've also found, you know, having a coach, I always like to have either a business coach or a coach for some specific aspect I'm trying to work with in my business has been really helpful. And when I first started out, I didn't know the value. You know, someone was like, you should get a coach. And I'm like, what? What's a coach? I don't need a coach. <laughs> right. It's really helped me. And I'm, sometimes my husband doesn't see the point. He's like, why are you paying someone to listen to you? <laughs> like, give you, you know, like give you advice or whatever. And I'm like, you have training, you have a boss, you have expectations, you have accountability at your job. I don't have any of that stuff. And so that's what a coach does for me is helps me move forward. So. Yeah. I was going to say, as you were answering that question, I was like, she's been coached. Like you saying, <laughs> you were like, uh, you got to stop making excuses. I'm responsible for my business. <laughs> Figure out the, I was like, you've been coached. I've yeah. been around business coaches. You've been coached and well, by the way. So kudos to your business coach. Yeah. And good for you. I mean, I came into this, my own business and not to, to, to hijack the conversation, but there's a lot of us on the call. I think that can identify this. And I had worked for other people that were managing their own small business. And I saw the things that they were doing that I admired. And then I saw the things they were doing that I was like, I will never do that. Yeah. Yeah. For and sure. so when I started my business, I was like, it all comes down to boundaries. So if we're on the, the, the topic of recommending books, boundaries is a book you have to read. It does have a Christian angle to it. If you can get past yeah, that, it. you'll be fine. It. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I was like, I, I, unless the world has fallen apart, you don't call me after or before eight or after five or on weekends, like, right. Yeah. And, because so many clients will walk all over you. And I've mentored other businesses and other marketing consultants who were like a slave to a client that wasn't even paying them. And right, right. I was like, you, like, you understand that this isn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I love to hear that you're recommending that because that's so powerful. Um, okay. Yeah, and when I started out, actually, as I was a freelance graphic designer, I didn't have any boundaries. I didn't have any kids then either. And I would work all night. I would like work on the weekends. And I totally got burnt out from that. that that's one reason I went to photography. But looking back, I'm like, I just didn't manage my business very well. I didn't have boundaries. I didn't charge enough all of those things I've learned <laughs> through the years. But uh, yeah, that's a good one. Having boundaries as a small business owner. Well, you can own your business or it can own you. I mean, I've learned that by watching other people get yeah. just owned. They're sending 3 a.m. emails to their right. team and stressing their team out. And you're like, that's not, that's not how that nobody wants that. Like right. even the client that will take, 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 if you sat him down and said, Hey, th this relationship isn't working. They're get most people, unless they're like an absurd narcissist, they're going to feel bad, mm -hmm. right? They don't want to be taking. So I think it's, it's important to do that. Uh, Beth jumped in and said, what would you say has been your greatest return or, um, ROI value of using a business coach? Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Well, my latest one I just used, um, she's a productivity coach. And during COVID-19, I wanted to develop a course to teach other photographers 
how to, my business model. And um, she, I hired her for three months. And I, at the beginning, I was like, by the end of this, I want to have the course made and make $10,000. And by the end, I did that. And that's the first time I've ever had a coach where like, I had a goal with a specific outcome. And by the end of the service, it was done. Um, and I mean, I did the work, but I attribute me getting it done to having that coaching. Um, so she was really great. Although I've had years of coaching prior to that. So I don't know if like, it's all kind of a cumulative thing or whatever, but um, in the beginning, like in coaching, we were like working on like my marriage and I'm like, why are we talking about my marriage? I want to make more money, <laughs> but it's all related, right? <laughs> like, like if my marriage isn't functioning, I, I can't move forward in my business. So was, I had to work through all of these things before I could finally get to the making more money part. So, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting the, how, I don't know, your whole, the things you're thinking affect every area of mm -hmm. your life, not just your business. So, um, I, I mean, my, my marriage has been, um, saved, I feel like from coaching, which is ironic. It was business coaching, but, uh, you know, our relationship's so much better. I feel like I'm a better parent. Um, I'm able to just manage my emotions better and my business is growing and doing great. So I think coaching is, I think finding the right coach can be a challenge, you know, mm -hmm. um, but just, you know, make sure you have um, some interactions with them before you decide to hire them. Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, you're hiring almost like it, it, a lot of people when they're a consultant or in the space that you are in, we, we talk about you're hiring another part of your team, you know, yeah. a contractor, but when you're hiring a coach like that, you're, it's almost like you're hiring another member of your family. Like, right, right. And so you have to, you do, you have to interview them and go, would I hang out with this person if I wasn't paying them? Mm -hmm. And you know, would I invite them into my home? I was chatting this and I feel like I have to bring it up because um, we hired, and by we, I mean my wife and I and our business hired Leanne Smith with uh, Pursuit of Profit. And she's been a guest at Business Brew before. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a profit coach, <clears throat> excuse me, that works with small businesses on, how to be more profitable and how to manage your money, almost like mm -hmm. uh, Dave Ramsey, but for your business. Mm -hmm. And the first thing she went after was like, where are you at? You two talking about money. And we're like biggest issue in our marriage, right? Yeah. Like number one issue. And I'm the only one bringing in, well, I'm not the only one, but Tinderbox is the primary source of income right. for our family. And so there is a lot of tension with that. And same thing, we worked with her for about three months and it was the best business and marriage decision mm -hmm. we've ever made. Mm -hmm. um, we never would meet about money. It was always a nightmare. We meet every week now. We talk about it. I have all the apps on my phone. I hate talking about it. And now I'm like, I lead the charge, but it's all about reframing. And it was like you were saying with how to get yourself ready to take a picture. Mm -hmm. It's all about reframing your mindset and redoing those conversations you've had over the years and getting yourself mentally prepared. So right. I second that, uh, get a coach. Uh, yeah. If you can't afford one, I do have to throw this out. If you cannot afford a business coach, SCORE and the SBDC both offer right. free business mentoring. So if you just want a mentor in your life who can speak in your life, the other thing is uh, get around people like Tanya, like me, who are willing to just bring you alongside and walk mm -hmm. you through the trials. I'm not a coach. She's not a coach, but we'll tell you what we've done wrong, right? Right. <laughs> we'll tell you what to avoid. So on that note, what, what are your biggest wins? And then what, what's your biggest mistake that you've made over the years when it comes to your business? It sounds like your biggest mistake might be being a, you know, giving too much to it, but I'll let you answer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Biggest mistake. Yeah. I think just that Le the learning in the in the past um how to be a business owner i think if i could go back i would have loved to well i did work as a graphic designer in some agencies so i had that knowledge but as a photographer i would have loved to have worked with someone who does what i do i feel like i kind of have invented what i do so <laughs> there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of like mentors out there or even online courses i kind of had to invent it as i went it would have been nice to have you know someone to kind of teach me along the way. Um, but let's see wins. Well, this year I made a goal to, um, double my revenue from last year. And when COVID-19 hit, I had two months of like no revenue. <laughs> and so I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to, like, I, I kind of had the thought of like, maybe I should just give up on that goal. But I, you know, last month I like looked at the numbers and I was like, 
there's still several months left in 2020. Like, I think I can still do it. So I, ad I adjusted it a little bit, but I'm on track to make that goal, even with everything that's gone on in our world and in the business community. And I feel like that mindset piece has really contributed to it. You know, I'm like, I'm not just going to give up. I'm, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to make that goal. And, um, I, I'm on track to hit it. So that'll be really exciting. <laughs> that is awesome. It's really hard to hit a target when you don't know what you're aiming at. And yeah. I think, and I stress this a lot with my marketing clients is that you've got to have goals and you can work backwards. If you want to double right. your revenue, you know how many clients you need yep. to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. And it's, and so it all, it does. You're always looking at it positively. You're always going, Oh my gosh, there's still three more months or, Oh my yeah. God, there's, but if you're always looking at it in the rear view, it's hard to feel good about the decisions you're making um, right. and, and, and where you're going, especially if you don't know where you're going. So I love that. That was some yeah. really, really yeah, and good. In the input. past, I never really, like, I'd be like, well, I'll make as much money as I can. I never really wrote down a number like this is how much I want to make. And it makes me feel uncomfortable, that number. <laughs> but I did that this year. And when I first set the goal, I was like, I have never done that in the past. How am I going to do that? Um, but actually having that number written down and looking at it every day and just, yeah, breaking it down by month, like how much do I need to make, um, has really helped. Yeah. Um, can't stress that point enough. I think that's some really solid business advice. Okay. Beth jumped in. She said, I ran my business for five years before I got married and we had to set boundaries about our business, um, early in our marriage. And now they've been married 19 years. Congrats. Awesome. So, um, that's great. And then she asked a question. She said, did you utilize coaching business resources through the SBA? I found they helped her start her business and get over some of the bumps in the road of being the best I can be as a business owner and leader. So have you used any SBA, SBDC score resources or is it all so, been? I wish I had known those existed when I started out. Like I, I didn't know. I actually hired someone to help me do my business plan and everything. And it was really expensive. And I went into debt for all of that. And then later I found out there are people there who could have helped me for free. Um, so I haven't really used them. I wish I would have known about them in the beginning. Um, and I do, I, I did use one from one of the colleges. There was a, cause I had an idea for an, a different startup. I can't remember where that was through. But there was some program through one of the colleges where, you know, a mentor could help you come up with a business plan. And that was really helpful. Um, yeah, I recommend utilizing all of those things if you can. Um, so uh, I mentor through SCORE, so I wish I would have known you then because I do uh, actively participate. And, and I did it because while I love clients that pay me, there's always going to be clients that can't afford it. And I love serving those folks just as yeah, much. That's cool. So SCORE provides me an avenue to do that. Um, but I think Beth is spot on, um, especially when it comes to writing a business plan. Like if you can get free help, uh, do it. And then if you are writing a business plan, anyone who's listening or watching later, do a business model canvas. I would say skip the business plan if you don't really need it for a loan or anything, because the business model canvas is more of a real world representation of how your business is going to operate. And it's more actionable. So if you don't know what that is, Google it. Uh, business model canvas, they're fun and they're, they're really easy to use. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. Visual too. Like you it's one page generally, right? Like you can right. see the plan. Um, yeah, I've done that too. And it's super helpful. You can use sticky notes to, you know, yeah. change things as they change and to do all that. And, um, you can really, you can make changes on the fly. It's, I, I think it's phenomenal. All right. So, uh, any clients, anyone you want to brag on anybody that you're doing some awesome work with outside of you, you mentioned Mike Bass and his team and anybody that you're doing fun work with that we can look to as an example that kind of really brings home all the things that you've been talking about. Sure. Yeah. Um, one of them is, um, MSI engineering. Um, they were my, I, we did their pictures a couple years ago, but, um, they just really wanted to attract more, um, like metropolitan jobs. They found when people heard they were from Spokane, they would just be like, Oh, they can't handle a big project like this or whatever. Like, you know, they wanted to, and they could, they had the ability, they had the portfolio. Um, and they just wanted that to be more, prominent in their visuals. So they had their website redesigned and brought me in. And when you go to their website, um, they just look really cool. <laughs> they, they look like more like a Seattle firm um, based on the pictures that we show there. And they just raved about it. They said everyone who visited the website um, we were super impressed and, um, and they have, you know, um, been able to get more of those jobs that were they were losing to firms in Seattle and that kind of thing. 
So I, they're, they're one of my favorite examples. Um, I have a travel agent now who's redoing her website and her, it looks so fun. Like her pictures are so bright and colorful. And um, I just love to see kind of the, the makeover that happens with the websites. That's my favorite. I mean, social media is super fun, but I like to see um, <clears throat> people really tell their story through their pictures on their websites. It's, it's really fun. So those are two examples. <laughs> I can't, um, how many times I come across a business that foregoes having a website and then you Google them and the first thing that shows up is their Facebook page. Yeah. And as much as I, I totally am behind social media as a really effective marketing tool. I mean, this is 2020. You have to have a website still. I mean, on right. one hand you have people who say like, I'm not tech savvy and I don't understand technology and I'm not good at computers. And then on the other hand, you have people who are like saying that, you know, Oh, who needs a website? And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> no, you need one. Cause you know, people still want to see that. And it's, it's like your digital brochure. It's the best chance yeah. you have to, I, and I had somebody who, who just reached out to me. He found me actually doing a Google search, which I just find mesmerizing because I don't put any effort in search <laughs> engine optimization other than the, just the bare minimum. Right. He said my reviews were really powerful, but then he was like, I went to your website and I hear this a lot. I really liked what you stand for. And mm -hmm. so your images can help tell that story. Mm -hmm. And then your written content can yeah. help tell that story. But if somebody comes to you and they're a really mission driven business, can you tell me some of your tips and tricks on how to capture that? Like, especially if they're a consultant, because I tell people all the time, my mission is to serve God by serving others. How do we tell that story with a picture? Yeah. So, well, one thing we do is in that planning meeting, we'd brainstorm ideas. I mean, some of the ideas will be dumb. <laughs> we won't do them. <laughs> I mean, do you want to hold a Bible? Maybe not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think just showing you, I mean, you know, like I said, humans are judgy. And by seeing your friendly face, by seeing um, you interacting with clients, um, and then, I mean, you need the, you're probably going to need the words in conjunction with those images, mm -hmm. right? For that mission. Um, but I mean, if you were like, I don't know. I mean, I like to just go to stereotypes because humans stereotype stuff. But let's say you were dressed like Kiss the Band or something, and it said, we like to serve God by serving others. <laughs> People are going to be like, well, that's yeah. a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, so I think just, you know, showing a picture of your family maybe or show, you know, what do people resonate with that they connect with God um, that you could show? So I don't know. That's just kind of off the flight, you know? No, I like that. I don't think enough people value brainstorming. Uh, I like if you're doing it in a group, I like brain writing uh, so that no one can own the floor. But the idea of just getting all your ideas down on paper, the good, bad, and the ugly is never a bad idea because yeah. it really helps you kind of workshop through how you can best tell your story. And that goes back to the conversation we've been having all along, which is planning ahead mm -hmm. is really going to help you and when it comes to posting on social media, you should have a plan. Like yeah. I should be able to look ahead to November and December and go, what are the things that I do every year during those months? Mm -hmm. And do I need pictures of those things to better tell my story? Yep. Uh, you'd be shocked how many businesses know all that stuff in their brain, but they never think about it. It's just so common. And it's just, it's just every day. And so when you ask them, hey, write down all the things that happen every January, February, et cetera. And then you start writing it down. They go, wow, we do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, what of that do you want a picture of, right? Yeah. Like how, how can we help you with an image to tell that story? Yep. Beth jumped in a little bit ago and said one of the hardest aspects of business planning is taking the time to refocus annual updates to the plan. Absolutely. I would agree with that. All right. So we're getting down to it. We don't have to go all the way to 930, but I, you know, we've been talking a lot. I've been asking a lot of questions. If anybody has questions, whether you're on Facebook or you're on Zoom, uh, this is the time to ask them. So use chat. Uh, uh, use Facebook comments to get those questions in. Any Anything that you've been thinking about, uh, Tanya, that you didn't get a chance to talk about yet? Anything that's been top of mind for you? Um, let's see. Well, I'm having a special in October. Ooh, there you go. I don't, um, hey, this is your, this is your floor. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, so it's, this is specifically actually for um, people who want to have like a team photo for their holiday communications, right? So it's an hour photo shoot, any location you want in the Spokane area. Um, come, I can do your team photo. If you have headshots, um, we'll just 
create whatever you need in an hour. So it's a little different from my, you know, my full thing. Um, but it's um, $750. You keep all the photos. Uh, so it could be a, a good update for your social media or, like I said, for those holiday cards you want to send out or an, if you have an ad campaign coming up and you need a couple photos. Uh, it could be a good thing for you. So if you want to take advantage of that or want more information, you can find me at Work Story Photography on Facebook or Instagram. And then WorkStoryPhotography.com is my website as well. You do those... You um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do those mini sessions a bit, right? Like those are a really cool thing. I think that really serves the community well. Like I can't yeah. afford a full session, but I can do a mini session. I can get one headshot or a group shot or whatever. Right. Yeah, I have my headshot events. It's one hundred and fifty dollars for one headshot. I do them every once in a while. Um, and so, if you're interested in that, to reach out. I don't have one currently set up, but usually, what I'll do is when I start to get a few inquiries for one, I'll just create one. <laughs> so nice. Uh, so yeah, that's another one where I, I like to offer, you know, to people who basically just need one photo to start. So. Right. Emily asked about M MSI engineers. She said the images look great and asked if you do their headshots as well. Yeah, I did their headshots as well. And I did a few of their project photos, but for the most part, only the people photos are what I did <laughs> on their website. So, so I have one, one last uh, question and, um, and this might be a curve vault. We've never talked about it. So I'm super <laughs> curious. Uh, we've talked a lot about the people in the business, uh, but talk to us a little bit about when I have a product and what good product image can do. And do you have experience doing product images? Talk to me through that part. And then any other questions, if people have them, use chat. But we'll, we'll, we'll count this as our, one of our last questions. Definitely okay. my last question. <laughs> yeah, so I've definitely done some product photography. In fact, this last week I did the catalog photos for Simply Northwest. They're, they're one of my clients that hires me every year for their holiday kind of website and catalog. Um, and that's, they're just, you know, it's a white background. Um, I know for Amazon and stuff, they have pretty strict um, requirements that has to be 100% pure white background. So that's something I can help with. Um, for Simply Northwest, I go to their location and we set up a little studio there. Um, in the past, she was taking all of her baskets in a van to a studio and it was a total mess and it took all day. Um, so I go to her, takes us a couple of hours and then I, you know, we do the clipping paths around them and everything. So, um, and I think, you know, good lighting is important for product photography, the right lens. I've seen a few local, um, like jewelry companies. I can tell they're kind of doing their own photos and I'm like, oh, it'd be so much better if you had a macro lens <laughs> and knew how to do the focus stacking and all this stuff. So it's kind of a different animal from photographing people. But, um, I mean, I think having... A professional if you're selling online especially a picture is is all you've got right that's right that's all you have to be able to sell it um i mean in conjunction with a description but um a good photo could make or break especially if you're selling something on the higher end price wise you know you want to have good pictures did you say macro lens yeah a macro lens is what's gonna kind of magnify a small item okay. um, that's important for for product for food too if i'm photographing food i'll use a macro lens it just makes it look bigger and like fuller in the in the picture uh question came in from beth what are three considerations for recording and posting an interview of a client or staff member Ooh, okay so i do some video as well um so for testimonials uh again lighting you want to you know have some flattering lighting on them um and then the sound for sure you know get a little lav mic or something so that you've got good sound. Um, and then the other thing when I'm interviewing is just helping them feel comfortable, you know, um, asking them questions or the right questions to get the answers that you want. That's kind of an art, I think. <laughs> uh, and yeah, those are kind of the three things I would recommend for success in doing those kind of uh, video kind of testimonials, so. Awesome. That was great. Okay, so no other questions have come in. So we'll we'll start our goodbye process. But Tanya, thank you so much for joining me. I know just uh, for those of you who don't know, this is normally your work day. This is the day that you outline to go out in the field and shoot and you gave us that time. So I, I appreciate it so much. I hope it was valuable for you. I know I got a ton out of this and I'm gonna have so much to, I took like three, four pages of notes. So I'm gonna have a lot to blog about. 
hopefully get the video up of this sometime next week along with the blog. But it was been, it's been so great. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. So at this point, if you want to log off, that's great. We'll hang around uh, for a few more moments and uh, end the Facebook Live here in a few more moments. But also thanks to everyone who joined us this morning, whether you're on Facebook Live or Zoom. It's been so great. This is one of the, the more busy ones. We've had a lot of good traffic today. So tell your friends. And if you're not getting the newsletter from Tinderbox, head to the website, sign up for that so you can get reminders about this and any other events that we do. All right. Hey, thanks. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> uh, ending Facebook Live sounds like uh, I'm also getting some feedback uh, through the chat that people really enjoyed it. So that was great. Good. Awesome. All right. Uh, hey, kudos to you. You're making it work with kids and everything. And I definitely, I don't know if you heard it, but my two kids are actually over here fighting while we were doing this. <laughs> oh, uh, I could And they, hear have, they have this tendency to walk in and then stare at me like in the peripheral like oh he's on a call and then they just sit there and i go stop doing that it's crazy distracting <laughs> yeah i tell my kids before i'm like i am getting on a zoom call do not come in the door yeah <laughs> so when my wife's on one so we're in an office that doesn't have a door yet but when oh, she's yeah. on a call she'll go in her room and she used to hang a sign and it was like <laughs> you can't you can't come in so hey thank you so much this was great uh you knocked it out of the park really good feedback i appreciate your time yeah, no, thanks for having me on. It was fun. I'm always, I like to do this kind of thing. So Okay, perfect. Well, if you have anything going on that you would like me to promote, just shoot me an email and I'll make sure it ends up in the blog and, okay. uh, or any of the social posts that go out after this. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And when you have this live too, let me know at all, or when you have it on your blog, let me yeah. know and I'll share it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thanks. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.